just a quickie before we watch my latest video. I made this video to try and help people who are beginning in the sport and also people who are intermediate shooters trying to track down those niggling accuracy issues that you can have. Also, if you look in the description, there are loads and loads of related videos that link to the subjects that are discussed in this video and hopefully they'll be helpful too. Hi guys and welcome to Airability, your regular dose of lead therapy and I'm here in my upgraded shed courtesy of Mrs G helping me out over a couple of weekends. Now today I'm going to be talking about accuracy and bench rest accuracy. Sometimes when we're doing bench rest we feel that our rifles are not giving us everything that they could give. I'm not talking about catastrophic losses of accuracy, I'm just talking about you know, when you're shooting indoors, you get the odd nine or a few nines when really everything should be tens. That sort of tiny, tiny loss of accuracy. So I'm going to be going through some potential causes and actions. It's more of a shopping list for things for you to be aware of so you can then do um, further investigation yourself. So there aren't really many answers here, but I'm going to try and raise as many issues as I possibly can. So... If there's any issues that you've not thought of before, it might help you track down any of those annoying niggles and nines. Right then, so I believe that the um, issues are split into three categories. One, that your gun is broken in somewhere, somewhere and isn't working properly. Two, all the settings that you have available to you, are you optimizing them and using them correctly? And three, are you just a rubbish shooter or do you need a little bit of help to get around a few issues to make things work better for you? So number one, is your gun working properly? This is a big one. A lot of people blame their guns that, that they're having problems with them. The gun can't be working right and that's why things aren't as accurate as they could be. But that is only part of the story and one of the possible um, issues. So first of all, if things aren't going well for me, and I believe there could be something wrong, the first thing I do is chronograph my gun to make sure that the total spread of the pellets speed coming out of the barrel is less than 10. If it's less than 10, you should be able to shoot accurately enough to compete in a bench rest tournament, given the other parameters are working well. Now, it's absolutely imperative that you have a gun that shoots consistently to ensure accuracy. Once you once the spread gets bigger than 10, you can have the pellets going up and down um, in the target, and this in turn can have problems with you being able to shoot consistently. So the first thing I do if I've got any doubts, I chronograph my gun. If it's under 10 feet per second, total spread, not deviance, total spread, I'm pretty much happy with that. Now we're going to start the front of the gun with potential issues. First of all, if you've got a silencer or an air splitter on, on the front of your gun, make sure it's not clipping. If there's any part of it clipping the pellet on the way out, that's going to destroy your accuracy. Also, make sure it's fitted firmly to your gun and it's not loose. Now, one thing that people miss is your air cylinder. If it's removable, make sure that it's been put back on the gun firmly and it's not loose a loose air cylinder can actually you know hurt the accuracy microscopically so make sure your air cylinder is on nice and tight and a lot of this theme of this first part of the video is going to be having things nice and tight so as we move back we also need to make sure that the action is seated in the stock correctly and it's nice and firm and it's tightened up and there's no wobble you wouldn't believe how many guns I've seen where people have said I'm having accuracy issues and over time the stock and the action has become loose. So then moving along here, scope, it's very important that you ensure that your scope is nice and tight to uh, manufacturer's um, specifications. Now as a general rule, I tighten the, the bolts that tighten the um, scope mounts to the gun on the rail to four newton meters and then i tighten the um rings that go around the scope to two newton meters 
with my Torx screwdriver. Now, please look at your manufacturer's instructions for the torque settings for your particular scope and rings. But as a general rule, if you can't find them, it's two on the uh, sorry, four on the rail, two on the rings. And you can't really go wrong from there. So, first of all, troubleshooting, it's about speed and making sure everything's nice and tight and nothing's clipping. So once you've um, done that, you can move on to the kind of more advanced things. And let's have a look at those. Sorry about the continuity catastrophe, but I had to pop back and talk about barrel cleaning. Barrel cleaning is a really important factor with regards to the accuracy of your rifle. And please can you have a look in the description at further video links that I've put in there that relate to the topics discussed in this video. And there's also, obviously, a special video about barrel cleaning. Number two, are you utilising all the settings that are available on your rifle correctly and have you set up your rifle and are you using it correctly so i'll go through a few of the um main things that can affect accuracy once you've established that your rifle's working correctly so first of all back at the barrel end of the rifle silences what silencer you choose can make a big difference on accuracy so if you want to use a silencer try a few silences you'll be surprised at the difference when it comes to accuracy the different silences can make. If you have an air stripper, most air strippers are adjustable and you can move the little cone in and out to um, adjust how much air is stripped from the pellet as it leaves the gun. Now, my advice for that is try it in half millimeter increments using a micrometer to see which setting is best for you when you are um, shooting. You wouldn't believe the difference half a millimeter can make on an air stripper. Now, back to the cylinder. Are you filling it correctly? Are you filling it to the um, right level? So you might have heard that unregulated guns have a thing called a sweet spot, and that is two pressures which the gun shoots the best between. So say 175 bar and 110 bar, right? And what you should do is once you find your sweet spot, after many hours of practicing and chronographing a full string of shots to see where the sweet spot is, you should always ensure you fill the gun to the right level so you're shooting in the sweet spot. Also, make sure that you've got enough air in your cylinder to fill the gun right up to the required level in the, in the sweet spot. I have a lot of people who say to me, my gun's broken, it won't fill, and it's because the cylinder is empty. So once you learn your sweet spot on an unregulated gun, it's named sweet spot for a reason. You're laughing and you're going to get the best performance out of your gun. If your gun's regulated, people argue over this. Technically, you shouldn't have much of a difference. But I find that um, there still is a, a slight sweet spot, even with some regulated guns. And with my hand shots here, they like to be shot at a little under 200 bar, about 190 bar I started off and shoot down to about 100 bar. And I have a really big sweet spot because it's regulated. But I find that's where I get the best performance from the first shot to the last shot. So. Remember your sweet spot, fill your cylinder properly. Now, moving, moving back here, um, trigger. So the trigger can be a real issue when it comes to accuracy if it's not set up right. Now, everybody's hands are different. Everybody's reach is different. What you need to be concentrating on is that you're not, the trigger is set in a way that you can pull it back in a linear fashion in a straight line towards the butt without any deviation right or left. And again, you wouldn't believe how many weird triggers I've seen over the years. And I admire people who can shoot with some of the weird twisted setups that, that I've seen. But if it works for them, it works for them. But it doesn't work for me. And if you're starting out, I believe a good straight linear trigger pull is going to help all the way. So when it comes to settings as well, there are a few settings that are kind of not to do with the actual gun itself that you need to consider so first of all is the block secure on the front it's the same as the stock it needs to be tight it needs to be um secure make sure that your rest is level make sure that um, the bolsters on the side of your rest are gently hooking the block in a way that the gun can still be lifted but is secure and make sure that the rest is level also make sure that the table that you're shooting from 
is secure and level. And also make sure the back bag is hugging the butt of your gun, you know, sufficiently to ensure the gun's not moving around. Now, other issues with um, accuracy. I've got four videos on pellet testing and pellet preparation. Please watch them because if you haven't taken the time to find the right pellet for your gun to make sure that you're getting the best accuracy out of it, you're, you're literally shooting into the wind because um, you'll never know what, what the best performance is of your gun. There is no sub substitute for hours of pellet testing and make sure you get the right sizing, lubing, weighing routine that's right for that pellet and your gun. So you could have everything working perfectly and you might not have pellet tested enough and you'll never know how accurate your gun can be. So pellet testing is a real big key to um, accuracy issues with your gun. Now, moving on to the scope. Um, you were seeing me go on about um, issues related to scopes and the biggest issue is parallax error. So in simple terms, when you're looking through your scope, your eye, there's, there's kind of two focal points in the scope. First is the image that you're shooting at. You focus that with the um, parallax adjustment here, and you focus the crosshairs perfectly in the beginning against a white sheet of paper, as I say all the time, using the eyepiece here. Right? What you need to be able to do is ensure that both are perfectly in focus. Because if you if if they're not focused perfectly, and one is um, a slightly different focal distance to your eye than the other one, right? When you move your head, if the rifle's absolutely set secure, you'll see the crosshairs move on the target, and that and that's parallax error. What you need to do is make sure that you get the tag target set up in the scope and the parallax focus right, so there's absolutely no wobble of the crosshairs on the target when you give your head a little shuggy, right? Parallax error, it's a massive issue. And for me, if I'm not doing it right and I'm suffering from it, it can be anything from half a ring to a ring on a bench rest target. And that's why it's really hard to spot, especially in the wind and things. So practice setting up your gun right. It's going to pay dividends. So other than making sure that all your settings are right, you're running at the right temperature, you focus your scope correctly, and you've got the right pellets. I think that is a great you know, list of things for people to check when they're concerned about their accuracy. Now, I'm going to talk about what happens if the problems with accuracy are you. Number three, is the problem with your bench rest accuracy you? Now, I would honestly say once you've been bench rest shooting a while and you've set your gun up properly, most of the issues come from you. And it's probably the hardest thing to admit. You know, you, you want to be able to fix problems quickly by throwing money at them. And sometimes it just takes hard work and practice and consistency. So first of all, I would consider how much are you practicing and how consistently are you practicing and what are you trying to achieve when you're practicing. Look at my video on Shifu's practice commandments, which will give you a good idea on how to go about training for bench rest events. Now, for me, there are some things I look out for when I'm shooting to make sure that I am giving my best considering I'm practicing. First of all, if you're using a cheat piece or not, it's about having constant um, using the scope exactly the same each time you get down, making sure your eye is in the right place because if there's any type of if you haven't quite squared off the parallax error, any movement of your eye from the optimum place is going to cause accuracy issues. So if you use a, a cheek piece, make sure you have a good cheek weld. It's in exactly the same place and you learn how to um, use the cheek, cheek piece consistently. If you don't use a cheek piece and you're one of these behind the gun people who hover, it's, a, it's another skill in itself and make sure that you are getting into the same position again and again and again now moving forward to that triggers now i know i told you about making sure the trigger was in a position where you can have a linear pull to give you the best chance of accuracy you also need to be able to use your trigger not snatch it 
It's amazing how people, how many people snatch at the trigger and don't realise they're doing it. One of the great things to do for me is video yourself shooting, and it reveals an awful lot of issues around your shooting. It shows you where your head's at. It shows you, um, you know, whether you're snatching your trigger. It even shows you sometimes you even forget the level you're going up because you get that excited when you shoot. Also, another thing. When you go to practice or competitions, how you are feeling, I believe, comes out of the end of the rifle like a needle on a lie detector. So if you're feeling stressed, anxious, uneasy, that all comes out the end of the barrel, in my opinion. If you've got too much sugar, salt, um, you're hyper for some reason, it all comes out the end of the barrel to your detriment. So you've got to make sure when you shoot, as well as practicing, as well as making sure your technique is right, is making sure that you are fit to shoot the most accurately you can and try and um, coordinate your day in a way that delivers you to the shooting line in the best possible state to compete. So that is really a big thing. For instance, if I went out and had a massive meal and then went to shoot, I would be lethargic and I wouldn't be on top form, as well as if I had... 10 miles bars and went and shot, I'd be full of sugar and hyper like a five-year-old kid on Skittles. So these are all things you've got to consider. And as you can see, this bench rest accuracy lack is a real spaghetti mess of issues that you've got to sort out. Now, my biggest, my biggest advice here is, we probably named about 20, 30 issues here, that are possibilities if your gun isn't shooting quite accurately enough. And my advice here is address one of them at a time. So if it improves, you can see there's an improvement. If it makes no difference, you can disregard it. If you start adopting two, three, four, five of these issues, you know, issues and try and address them at once, you're going to run into some great problems trying to figure out which one worked or which combination of, of changes worked. So when you're doing something with regards to anything to do with bench rest and trying to improve things, do one thing at a time so you can backtrack or move forward with another thing. Well, I think I've witted on enough. And that's kind of like the starter list. You know, if you've got any other things you believe people should look for when they are shooting bench rest, if they've got accuracy issues, please put them in the comments below. Join the Facebook group, you know, and get involved in the conversation. We love talking about this stuff and about how to improve things and enjoy our shooting more. Everybody's welcome on the AirAbility Facebook group. Please pop along, chat. We're a friendly bunch. There's over a thousand of us, so it can't be that bad. Until next time, guys, remember, get out there and live the egg on dream. Take care. Bye-bye.